Hello, welcome back. JD and the DC here. Um, today we are going to do a very special episode that I've been looking to get to for a while now. Um, and, and it really comes down to, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a pretty complicated subject that a lot of people have questions about. And understandably so. It took me a while to really wrap my brain around it. Um, and that's this concept of 9-9. Nine, nine. And I'm sure you've seen it out there in the world uh, if, you're, if you've been involved in crypto at all. Um, and, and when I say nine nine, I mean nine common nine. It's just uh, uh, I'm not going to really go into the into what brought the the term around or anything like that. If that if you want to look that up, go for it. I'm sure there's lots of articles out there. But uh, essentially, what it is is this: uh, it's utilizing uh, lending and borrowing um, systems to to do something called looping. Um, and today I'm going to try to go over some of the risks, some of the rewards, and, and really dry, dive real deep into how it all works and, and why it works the way it is. So hopefully by the end of this video, uh, which might, ends up be, might, might end up being a pretty long one, um, you'll have a concept of how you could do this and when you might want to do this and when you might not want to do this and why. So without further ado, let's get to it. So um, first off, let's introduce you to a few sites out there. There are a lot of sites out there that have lending um, as part of their ecosystem. So here's one right now, Trader Joe. If you go into this Lend tab if on Trader Joe, um, this, they call this Banker Joe. But essentially, it's just a, a lending and borrowing platform so that people can enter. Uh, you know, these uh, and a lot of times there's there's a lot of different. Um, uh, coins that you can enter in on the deposit side and the borrow side. Um, you can see here you can lend out uh, AVAX, uh, USDT, some stable coins here, some other things, Joe, um, and and then essentially borrow. Um, you can do both. Um, and then here's Sol, uh, Solend. This is on the Solana network. That was on the uh, Avalanche network. This is on the Solana network. I really like this one. Um, again, same 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 type of deal. You notice this is pretty pretty much the same uh, setup where you have US. Let's let's say using this as an example, you have USDC on one side. Um, you can see how much you you know. A lot of times you can see the APY you, that you would get um, if you gave the the protocol USDC to use. Um, and then you'll see there's a percentage of how much you'll um, you'll have to pay in uh, interest if you end up borrowing any. Um, and then lastly, here's a, a very, very popular one that has on multiple chains. Um, and uh, they, they have, if you go into their borrowing tab, Abracadabra uh, money, and you'll basically be able to provide an asset um, that's on the outside here, and you can borrow MIM, Magic Internet Money, which is a stable coin. Um, at uh, under under the terms of each one of these uh, pools, they call cauldrons. Um, so before we dive too deeply uh, into any of these applications here, a um, couple notes here, and let's just take a look at AVAX here or Avalanche uh, Banker Joe real quick. Um, so for example, if I had some Avalanche, uh, some AVAX tokens right now, right? Um, I'm seeing a 9.56 APY. What this means is I can give as many tokens as I want of AVAX to this and I'll make 9.56. It's sort of like staking, but it, it's not the functionality of staking, right? So so what's happening here is you're, you're giving your AVAX to the protocol, right? They're paying you a reward, uh, which traditionally comes out of the, uh, the, the interest portion of, um, of the protocol. And uh, and that's it. That you're 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 giving a supply of liquidity to the protocol so that um, people can come here and then borrow um, borrow whatever token it is that they want to borrow. So um, the way this typically works, um, they're called over collateralized loans, essentially. So basically, what happens is, let's say I give AVAX, or let's say I, I give a hundred dollars worth of AVAX um, to to the protocol. If I click on here, I'll be able to see there's a collateral factor, which just means, uh, and, and this is the number, uh, the maximum amount, basically, of, of how much I would be able to borrow against it. So the so the way it works, and, and this is this kind of goes into how liquidations work. If I give a hundred dollars to the protocol, they say, hey, no problem. You can actually borrow up to, in this case, it was 75% of that. So I could borrow $75 worth 
of any any token I want, right? So I gave $100 worth of AVAX, that's, and then I, I can borrow $75 worth of whatever I want, okay? Um, and they're basically saying, hey, look, you know, and keep that, uh, you know, at a certain point, um, there's a there's a there's a percent at which you get liquidated. OK, um, in this particular case, there's a little bar here. Um, you know, they, they say, look, at 100 uh, percent means your position will be liquidated. What that does is they basically they they take your collateral that you add. So whenever you deposit this into a lending system like this, they call it collateral. OK, um, and essentially it's because if you borrow against it, they'll sell your collateral if let's say the, the the value drops of AVAX, right? And now your collateral is no longer worth $100. Maybe it drops down to $50 worth, right? It cuts in half, AVAX cuts its price in half. Um, before it gets to that point, they'll sell, they'll flag your position for liquidation so that you always have enough to pay back how much you borrowed. And that's, that's essentially what this liquidation thing's happening, okay? So when they liquidate your assets, it's basically because you have this loan to value ratio and, and, and essentially you've dropped below a certain point. You, you're, the value of your collateral has gotten too low and it's putting, they never wanna put people who submitted deposits into the system at risk, right? They always want people to be able to be paid back. So what they will do is they'll just sell off your position. They'll pay back the borrower, uh, the person who uh, lent the money to you, and then you'll get whatever's remaining back. Um, and that's kind of how it works. So so all that to say, um, if, you did, if you didn't follow along with all that, don't worry about that. Um, I actually have a lot of examples here I want to go over with you on what that kind of means and how that works. Um, so, so let's just get really in depth here into some of these numbers, okay? Um, so in this particular case, I, I made this nice little Excel, uh, well, I guess it's a Google Sheet, sheet um, document to kind of explain a couple different situations. And we're gonna start simple and small, and then we're gonna work all the way up to what, uh, what the nine nine looping is. Uh, because, but but I, I do think it's important that we go over the, the foundational aspects of, of understanding how the lending and borrowing system work and, and, and just so that you, and more, most importantly, you have an idea of what you're getting into. And, you know, I, I, I travel around a lot of these discords and I lurk and, you know, I, it, it really saddens me sometimes to see um, the sheer, especially when there's a huge drop in the market. Um, the sheer quantity of people that are getting liquidated and and realistically they, they really didn't know what they were getting into they just know that there's a lot of youtube videos out there there's a lot of places out there saying hey yeah do this you get some crazy apys uh and they're not they're not entirely wrong they're just leaving out the risk factors and allowing giving you all the information you need to make a educated data-driven decision on how to manage your risk and what you're capable of putting up and, and things of that nature. So let's let's just I, you know I want I want to provide you with all of that information so that you can leave here feeling a little more educated about the situation. So we're going to start small and simple. So first thing I did is I set this calculator up to to work off of what Trader Joe here is. So we we're going to use this USDC uh, stablecoin um, as an example. And in our exa in our first example here. We're going to give the system USDC um, as collateral, and then we're also going to borrow um, against it. So, so the very first situation is I can give this protocol a thousand dollars USDC and and make eight point zero four percent on it. I don't have to borrow. So that's your first thought. Okay, it doesn't cost you anything. It, it, it the you will make eight point zero four percent. And this is a variable APY. It's based on factors such as how much, how many deposits are in the system, and how much people are lending. But, but regardless, uh, the, the no risk factor here is I could take this stablecoin, put as much of it in here as I want, and make eight point zero four percent on it. And that's the first step. You could do that all day and not be a, really have any min very 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 minimal risk in the like those. Uh, uh, and, and, and that's, that's the name of the game, right? So the next step here is, okay, well, what if you want to borrow against it and why would you do that? Um, so let's, let's take a look here. So I set this, like I said, I set this up to be under those parameters. So the loan to value ratio is at 80%. And that means the, that, and that's the same thing as this collateral factor. Okay. That means if however much USDC I put in here, I can borrow 80 up to 80% of its value. 
So for example, if I were to borrow, if I were to put $1,000 in USDC in, I could borrow up to $800. That's 80% of it, okay? Um, uh, so the starting APY is 8.05. You'll notice that that is uh, what it is here on the front. And then um, the interest APY right now is 7.39. Imagine that this is 4.5. It was just there a few moments ago, but it's not, it's not gonna change much. You'll, you'll still get the idea. Uh, not important. All right. So breaking it down, let's go. So um, I put $1,000 USD, you have $1,000 USDC stable coin and you put it into the program, right? Um, let's say you borrow the maximum amount. Let's say you borrow your 80% loan to value ratio. So you borrow $800, okay? So what's that mean for you? That means um, in this particular situation, you will make $80.50 over the course of the year at this APY, right? Because 8.05% uh, times your $1,000 you put in, that's how much profit you were gonna make, okay? Now, since you borrowed $800, you're gonna get charged interest, right? That's 7, uh, that 7.45. So you're gonna be charged $59.60 interest over the course of the year. Um, and, and you can see where I got that number. Um, which comes out to a grand total of $20.90 profit total. Now, what actually happened here? Um, so in this example, you gave a thousand, you got back 800. So it only effectively locked up $200 of your money. You with me? Cause you've got your $800 back. Okay. And you can do with that, whatever you can do with that, whatever you want. Okay. So only $200 is actually locked up in the, in the system. So as a result, that $200, you on that $200, you were able to generate $20.90 profit. So that actually kicks your APY. If you're, if you're really looking at it from a brass tax point of view, you still have $800 cash and your $200 is actually generating 10.45% APY because 20.90 divided by $200 is, is, is a, you know, 10.45%. And the most important factor is here, you have $800 in USDC to still do whatever the hell you want with it. Okay. You can, you can actually, you can send it back to an exchange and pull it out and put it back in your bank account. You could go exchange it for Solana or Bitcoin or whatever, and do something else with that. Who knows, but it's yours to do whatever you want. So that's the first step. That's the first thing to understand, right? You're, you're effectively locking up $200. Now, granted, if you ever want this $1,000 back, the, this, this collateral, you're gonna have to pay back this $800, right? Um, but you get the picture. Um, so, so that's the first step. So the next step here is understanding how this would work if you didn't do a stable coin to stable coin, right? Because right now we're we're giving a stable coin and we're and we're borrowing a stable coin, right? Um, and and we know stable coins they don't they don't they they're they're the the whole point of them is to stay pegged to a dollar, right? Um, so what I want to do next is go through a bunch of scenarios on. Let's say you did something like I gave AVAX and I borrowed AVAX, or let's say I gave AVAX and I borrowed uh, USDC. Or maybe I gave USDC and borrowed uh, Link Daddy. You know things of that nature. Like what? What does that mean for your for your uh, portfolio? And let's let's look at or for your position and let's look at the risk involved with this, right? So let's go to the next page here. Okay, so so I, I mentioned there's a few different options there we could we could have gone with, right? Um, so let's let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at all these different scenarios, and let's take a look at some examples and 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 why you might want to do one or the other, and how you can kind of manage your risk. Um, so the first one we've already kind of touched on. So the you deposit a stablecoin, and you borrow a stablecoin. The risk factor is low, right? Because the stablecoin value isn't going up or down; it's staying the same. So uh, a lot of times you're you're good to go, right? Um, uh, how about, how about if you borrow, let's say, let, or let, I'm sorry, let's say you put in, you deposit a, a, a value changing crypto. So that's any cryptocurrency that changes in value. The price goes up and down on the, on coin market cap, right? Uh, or on exchange. And that's, that's anything other than a stable coin. Okay. Um, so I put here in this example, let's say, let's say we put Solana. Now, obviously you can't do that here, but over here, let's say you put Solana into the system 
to make 2.23 percent whatever that, that that really doesn't matter that to uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna really ignore the apy portion of things right now because i want you to understand what happens with the collateral and the loan to value ratio because the loan to value ratio is so important because if it gets off kilter enough remember you can be liquidated and liquidation is no bueno um so um uh, so let's look here. So value changing crypto. So let's say I put in some. Let's say I put in some Solana, and then I borrowed some the same as the deposit value changing crypto. So in this case, it would be Solana. So in that case, uh, we're going to look at an example. What happens when something goes up or down? Right, the low risk factor is kind of low, um, and and you'll see why here in a minute. We're going to look at an example if the value changing of the the crypto asset is, or you have a value changing crypto asset like Ethereum, and you borrow a stable coin. Um, and then the, your risk factor tends to go up a little bit. Same thing if you do it the opposite way around. If you put in a stable coin and you borrow a value changing crypto asset, right? The, so the, the risk factor continues to go, uh, gets, gets, it's about the same as it is uh, with the, this, this top one here, but it's, not, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit higher than, uh, than, these, than these ones here where they don't change in value and, and, it's, and it's not quite the highest where, you know, the highest risk is going to be if you put in a value changing cryptocurrency as collateral and then you borrow a value changing cryptocurrency um and that is and you're going to see why here in a minute so um let's let's go ahead into um some examples and and i and i made some assumptions based on uh you know just to keep the examples simple um, and we can talk about how those those things might be changed. So so using the max loan to value for all examples of 80%. So that just means uh, in, in all these examples, we're going to say um, the, the max you're allowed to borrow is 80%, okay? And the if you go above that 80%, your position will be flagged for liquidation so that they can sell your collateral to pay back the, the, bar, uh, the lender and then you get to keep whatever's left over, okay? Uh, if you're flagged for liquidation, um, there, there's typically a liquidation fee. You'll notice here, uh, like if I click on one of these things, um, a lot of times they'll have a liquidation fee. Uh, where is it? I thought it was on here. Some places don't have a liquidation fee. They might not charge you. So I know they have it on the Abercadabra, right? Uh, so, so these guys, they definitely charge you a fee for being liquidated. Um, and that'll just come out of the remaining collateral that you have. Um, next is we, we're going to assume 0% interest and I will let you know, uh, in most cases, almost all cases, you're going to have interest. So we'll, we'll come back to this piece and what happens, but, but realistically, I just wanted you to see how the change in value of these currency of, of your, of these tokens can affect your loan to value ratio, which is the leading cause of liquidations. Okay um and and that's the whole point just understanding the position in order to not get liquidated or understanding what you can do to a position in order to to make it less risky and 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 uh you know again avoid liquidation that's the whole that's the whole deal so in this first example uh we're just going to go down the list they they're they're in order here so the first one here is usdc let's say we put usdc in this is this is what we actually just said um, and we borrowed USDC. So let's say we put in a thousand dollars, and we we only borrowed five hundred dollars. Because remember, the uh, the 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 eighty percent is a maximum. We don't have to hit that maximum. In fact, I recommend you stay away from the maximum. Um, so so let's just say we we borrowed five hundred dollars, and and we put in a thousand dollars collateral. Now this is a pretty neutral position because uh, here's the notes, right? The value of the stable coins don't fluctuate budget beyond, you know, a, a penny or even less than a penny. So it, it, of a dollar, right? It's, it's usually right around a dollar. Um, and that's the point of a stable coin. So if the USDC even becomes, uh, uh, so in this case, so even if USDC does become unpegged and what that means is let's say it does drop below a dollar, it goes to 98 cents, 95 cents, whatever it is, or, or let's say it goes up. Um, or the value, uh, you know, all of a sudden USDC becomes worth, I don't know, dollar and 11 cents, dollar 12 cents, whatever the case may be. Um, it really doesn't matter for your position because the loan to value ratio will say the same because as the collateral value goes up, right? If this starts, you know, if this doubles in price, now all of a sudden somehow USDC is worth $2, you know, you have $2,000 of value. Well, your borrow amount now is 
you know, the double as well. So the ratio stays the same. So you'll still be at 50%. So this is a pretty neutral position. So when, when people talk about uh, borrowing a, uh, you know, uh, the same type of stable coin, it, it really is a pretty neutral position. The only thing you have to worry about in, in these cases is, is there an interest fee? So in this case, you know, if there's zero percent interest, you don't have to worry about anything. However, if there becomes an interest fee, that's when you have to worry because a lot of times they'll tack the interest fee onto the amount of your debt. And that is the only way for your loan to value ratio to start going in the wrong direction, right? You would actually have to either uh, start adding collateral in that case um, if you wanted your loan to value ratio to. So if there's a 1%, let's say there's a 1% uh, interest rate on this example. And, you know, so over, over the course of, uh, one year, you generate 1% of, of interest. So 500 times 0.01, whoops, of course that equals zero because I can't type, um, 0.01. There's $5 in interest over the course of the year. So unless you add $5 of collateral or pay that $5 over the course of the year back, then, uh, then your loan to value ratio will start changing, right? Um, and not in your favor typically. Now, uh, in that in that particular example with an interest fee, typically you're doing this for some sort of APY. So as long as the APY for your collateral is more than your interest, you're 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 traditionally pretty safe. Okay. So if you're if you're generating a an APY of two percent and it's a 1% interest fee, well, you're still on top plus 1%, and this will start going down 1% every year. I think that makes sense, right? All right, let's look Let's look at the next example. Um, I think you get, an, you get the idea about interest and, and why I kind of left it out, but um, let's, let's continue down here. So the next example here was, let's say we have a value change in crypto and the same deposit uh, the same and you borrow the same crypto that you deposited it doesn't matter what it was it, it could have been solana it could have been bitcoin it could be ethereum it doesn't doesn't really matter we use solana in this example so in this example let's say uh solana is worth 150 dollars per soul um and you deposited one thousand dollar one thousand us dollars worth of it so i don't know how many tokens that is but but let's say you have one thousand dollars usd value in Solana that you put into like this pool here, okay? Um, and then you chose to borrow 50% of it. So let's, uh, okay, so just the same as this example, our loan to value ratio, I could have probably borrowed more um, because the loan to value ratio is probably higher than max, but we wanna avoid the max. Um, but but that really comes down to what you wanna do as far as the person taking on the risk. But, but, uh, but in these examples, we're gonna avoid the max and you'll see why. Um, so we're at five hundred dollars, and and the nice thing about this position, so it you know at the at, at this fifty uh, percent loan to value ratio, the 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 position's pretty neutral in risk. Um, let's say Solana doubles in value, right? Let's let's say uh, you know tomorrow huge huge news comes out, solves uh, world hunger, whatever. Uh, Sol Solana Solana doubles in value. Um, so now your USD value is worth. The amount you deposited is now worth two thousand dollars. Well, that's fine and dandy, but it also doubled on the borrow side. So now you actually owe a thousand dollars worth of soul, right? So uh, the point is, it it didn't matter, right? For your position, you still have a fifty percent loan to value ratio, um, which is great because it's still neutral and you're not at risk of getting liquidated. And the same thing happens if, let's say, soul. Has, Solana has some sort of crazy network congestion, or maybe there's some crazy hack, right? Um, and it and it halves in value. You know, it cuts it cuts it straight in half, and now it's worth seventy five dollars per soul. Well, the amount of your uh, the value of how much you put in dropped to five hundred dollars. That sucks. But uh, but luckily for this particular position, at least from the a loan to value perspective, you know, your your uh, the amount you borrowed now is only two hundred fifty dollars in uh, in value. So, so again, we're still at 50%, so it's pretty neutral. Um, and I just put a note here, you know, if the soul, if soul increases in value, so the value you borrow at the same rate, therefore keeping your loan to value the same. All right. Um, next up, let's say we have a value change in crypto, just like we did above here. 
and we borrowed a stable coin. Um, so in this particular example, uh, we have one side, your deposit, that could go up and down in value. And then we have the other side of your uh, of, of your borrow that stays the same. It won't go anywhere. It's a dollar, right? Um, so what happens here? So let's look at the first situation. Let's say uh, at the time ETH was $4,000 per ETH. Um, you deposited only $1,000 worth of Ethereum, however, point whatever, that comes out to be 0.25 um, ETH. And, uh, and you borrowed $500 worth of USDT, which happens to also be 500 USDT. Uh, so the position starts out neutral, right? We're at 50% loan to value ratio, but let's say ETH goes nuts, right? As we know it can, um, doubles in value, right? Now all of a sudden you have $2,000 in the collateral side of things and you still only owe $500. So this is a good situation, right? Uh, your loan to value ratio just dropped to 25%. There's a lot you could do here, right? Um, all of a sudden you could... Uh, you, you could take out $1,000 and you'd be back to your $1,000 and pay back your loan. You could just, it, it, there's a lot you do. This is a good situation, right? You could borrow more if you wanted to um, and put yourself back to uh, $1,000. You know, you could borrow another $500. You get yourself back to 50% load to value. So that's one thing you could do. Or you could just let it go, right? And, and see what happens. And, and you're, you're, you know, life, life's ducky. Now, now here's, here's, here's the bad part. Let's say it halves in value. Um, and these are extreme cases, right? Doubling a value, having value. But I, I think I think the point is you're. I think you'll get the point. Um, so let's say it halves in value. Um, now all of a sudden, instead of it being worth a thousand dollars, you're worth five hundred dollars, um, and you still owe five hundred dollars. So this this is bad. Um, uh, so your loan to value ratio is a hundred percent. And let's be honest, with the max loan to value of eighty percent, you would have been liquidated well before this got to $500, down to $500. So you would have been liquidated when this thing reached, I, I you know, I, I forget, I should have actually done the calculation. So uh, 1,000 times 0.8, you would actually be flagged for liquidation only once, once, your, once your position loses $200 you will be down to 80% loan to value ratio. After that point, they're like, this is getting risky for the person who lent you money. We're going to need to sell your stuff, pay back this $500 and you'll be... So So what, what happens in this situation, right? So this is the first liquidation situation, right? So, so what would actually happen here is Ethereum would start dropping in price. You wouldn't even get to the half price thing here. Um, you would get to about $800 where your collateral, whatever that makes Ethereum value wise, but, um, your collateral would, once it got to $800 worth of USD, uh, of, of, uh, you know, $800 worth of value, you're at 80%, you'd be flagged for liquidation, which means that they would liquidate your position. So they'd sell your ETH. They would have $800 and they would take the $500 you owe minus $500, and they would pay back the person that you borrowed money from, okay? That makes you good on your borrow, right? And you have $300 left. Now, if there's a liquidation fee, like we saw in some cases, uh, like over here, right? Which there's all kinds of different liquidation fees that they have depending on the, uh, depending on the uh, cauldron. But, um, so they would, they would at that point take the fee from you as well. So if it's 10%, they take it, they take $30 from you. So you would actually be left with $300 minus 30 and you would have $270 left in your position. And that's what would happen if you got liquidated. No bueno, right? I agree. Um, now keeping in mind, if all you did was, uh, put money in and borrow money out, Keep in mind here, you might not be realizing this, but you also still get to keep the amount that you borrowed, okay? In this particular case, so if you just put money in and borrowed once against it, you still, you, that borrowed money, you know, you, you take and you, just like before, you, t uh, you take and use wherever you want. You do whatever you want with it, so you still have that money. Um, whether you have it sitting tight waiting to pay back this uh, now in, in this particular case if you're if you're have a more risky position like this remember this is medium risk right 
Um, so if you have, as you get more risky, it becomes a good idea to have reserve cash on hand so that if, if the price action starts going sideways or uh, upside down on you, like this does, and it won't take much, right? Like it only took $200 worth of uh, value to move before you got uh, flagged for liquidation, you would you would traditionally want to keep some of this money on hand to pay like it, to to pay back your borrow in a pinch, right? So you could have avoided liquidation entirely just by paying back some of your borrow or and and sh again shifting your loan to value ratio. Um, but the point is, let's say you did get liquidated, you had this five hundred dollars still out here, so you actually came out with um, seven hundred and seventy dollars. Um, uh, now, granted, you lost two hundred and thirty dollars to liquidation, okay? Because you put in a thousand dollars worth, right? You borrowed five hundred, um, and now you're left with seven hundred and seventy in the end. So it's not the end of the world, um, but still risky. You don't want to get liquidated. You, you paid a bunch of money for nothing. Okay, moving on. So obviously, you can see immediately how in this scenario it gets exceedingly more risky right uh liquidation becomes a thing after that point okay um provided interest is zero it's not even factoring in the interest rates and stuff okay uh, next one is the opposite of that let's say we have a stable coin that we uh give as collateral um and let's say we have a value changing crypto that we borrow okay uh, so in this particular case, we have UST on one side and AVAX on the other side. So let's go down here. So let's say we give UST value. So in every case, UST is not going to move from it, it, that that on the the collateral side, the 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 dollar value that you put in doesn't change, right? So that's the point of a stablecoin. But on the borrow side, it can. So let's say AVAX is going for hundred dollars per AVAX. Um, and initially, you put in $1,000, you borrowed $500 worth of it. That puts us at our neutral point. Let's say AVAX doubles in price. Okay, that's that's kind of the worst situation for you, right? You're, it won't take you long. It won't take much of a price jump for you to get to that 80%, and it's going to liquidate you, right? So if this doubles in price, now you owe $1,000, and, and you only gave $1,000 in collateral, again, well before this, you would have been liquid. When this hits 80%, you would have been liquidated and all the things that we just talked about uh, with with uh, this previous example start to happen, okay? And the exact opposite, if AVEX loses uh, half of its value. So if it loses half of its value, you still put in $1,000, but now you only owe $250. Very good. Now you can either pay back $250 worth of AVEX and you're good to go, or you could borrow more, or you could leave it go, right? And, and just sit pretty at a loan to value ratio. But that's that's the whole point. We're, we're focusing on the loan to value ratio. Okay, so these two examples are pretty similar, aren't they, right? Um, you, you take a look, there's, there's one bad circumstance on each, um, and there's two uh, neutral to good, uh, there's two neutral to good situations, right? Uh, which makes sense, because they're just the uh, reciprocal, reciprocal of each other. So let's get, uh, and those were our two medium risk guys. Um, all right, so let's talk about this bad boy, um, this high risk and potentially high reward. But I want to know, high, I want to note high risk. Well, let's say you have a value changing crypto on both sides. Okay, no stable coins. They're not the same crypto that you. So so value changing and not the same. Okay, because remember we had value changing up here, but they were the same. It's not the same. The, the, this this example is if they're not the same. Okay, um, so if we look at this example, there's a lot of scenarios. So we're gonna start at the top. We're gonna work our way down. So these first three examples here, uh, scenarios, we have Bitcoin. Let's say it's going for forty thousand dollars of Bitcoin. And we, let's say we put a thousand dollars worth of uh, Bitcoin in, okay? And let's say in all three of these, the, the, so in this first example, the value of Bitcoin, let's say just, uh, you know, it's a thousand dollars, it stays a thousand dollars and nothing happens really to the price of it. And let's say we borrowed Solana against it. And let's say we borrowed $500 worth of Solana against it, okay? Um, so that's our neutral position. So that's where we started. We're at a 50% loan to value. So let's say Bitcoin's price remains the same or pretty flat. Our value remains right at $1,000 and Solana doubles in price. Oh dear God, now we owe $1,000 worth of Solana. 
We're at a 100% loan to value. We're gonna get liquidated well before Solana actually doubled in price. We're gonna get at 80%, we're gonna get liquidated. Bad news bears, so that's a bad situation. Um, in this situation, so let's say uh, Bitcoin stays the same and Solana halves in price. Well, very cool. Um, that means our loan to value ratio goes to 25% and now we only owe $250 worth of Solana. So that's a good situation. All right, now let's say the other side happens, right? We have Bitcoin, um, but let's say that doubles in value, right? Um, and Solana stays the same. Well, similar scenario to, to the one right above it. Um, you know, our loan to value ratio, Solana is still only worth, uh, we, still have, we still only owe $500 worth of Solana. And now we have $2,000 worth of Bitcoin. Great, 25% loan to value, good to go. Came out on top of that one. Um, in this next scenario, um, that we, we kind of remain neutral. Let's say they both double in value, right? Um, now we owe two, uh, now we, we gave $2,000 uh, worth of, we, we, we supply our, our collateral is $2,000 worth and our borrow is unfortunately now also $1,000 worth, right? So we're, we're back to 50%, we're back at our neutral party, uh, our neutral stance. So let's say in this case, this is, and this is the best case scenario that could happen in this, uh, this case, right? Uh, let's say Bitcoin, the amount, the, the token that we supplied doubles in value and the token that we borrowed halves in value. So now it's, we only owe $250 worth of the token. Great. Um, so now our loan to value ratio just became a 12.5%. That's the lowest situation scenario we're gonna be able to get to in, in this case, okay? Um, now, in uh, let's say Bitcoin starts to half. Let's say Bitcoin halves in price. So now we owe five hundred, or now we have five hundred dollars in, um, in collateral, and Solana just remains the same. That's no bueno. We're gonna get liquidated. Um, let's say and this is and this is the worst case scenario. Let's say this halves in price. The 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 your collateral halves in price, and the token that you borrowed doubles in price. Right. That's that starts to swing things very, very poorly. And you can imagine, so this is a 200% swing, okay? You can imagine how quickly you can get liquidated in this scenario, okay? In this particular scenario, and this is why it's so risky, it won't take much for this to drop and this to rise for you to get liquidated at 80%. Um, I mean, yeah, it's 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 pretty nuts. You can do some pretty quick calculations on, you know, just uh, by on your own here. But this scenario right here is worst worst case scenario, right? Um, and and this can happen so easily. This scenario, and I'm not even talking about just having and doubling, right? Like in in because you're not even gonna get to there with with these tokens um when it comes to you're already like at this point you're 200 percent. you you would have gotten liquidated 120 percent ago right like it's it's insane so this is the nightmare scenario for for a position in this case um and then the other the last one is that if they both have in price well they follow the same right the, you you have 500 dollars in collateral and now you only owe 250 dollars now, keeping in mind uh, the amounts that you borrow, again, in this particular case, you keep those amounts. Um, so like here in, in this top case, right? Um, we started out with $1,000 in Bitcoin. Um, we borrowed $500 in Solana. Um, and then there, it really comes down to what did you do with that $500 in Solana, right? Did you keep it in Solana so that when it halves in price, it's now it's only worth $250 and you just have that in your wallet? I mean, that's great if you're planning on repaying back your loan with that, um, but not so great if you were trying to do something else with it. Um, uh, now, keep in mind, I'm saying this, you can do whatever you want with this borrowed money. You can take it to a swap, like like, uh, like let's say I, I borrowed uh, some AVAX, right? I can take it to a swap and swap it for whatever I want. Like it's your money to do whatever you want with it. You do, and so you could take Sol, you could swap it um, on, a, on one of the swap sites like Radium or something like that for Solana. Um, and, and, and turn that into a uh, stable coin uh, so that you know, you know you always have $500 or maybe you're taking it to do something else with. Um, so if you get liquidated, just remember you keep the, you keep the value borrowed. That, that's the important part. Uh, like I, I think you can run through some of the scenarios in your head 
Um, and everything becomes more risky when interest calculations are added to debt. Um, I will also note that everything becomes uh, a little more lucrative when you start adding APYs, right? So the key to that is knowing as long as your APY outdistance your interest rate is higher than your interest rate, you're, you're pretty safe. But the second that starts going the other direction, that's when you start offsetting the loan to value in the, in the wrong direction, right? It starts to rise. Um, so those were a lot of examples. Um, and I hope by walking through each one of them like that, you got a better understanding of how many different ways to set up a position and understands the understanding the risk of said position okay um and now i think it's time it's time let's talk about the looping okay because this is where things get interesting and and, and the reason i kept harping on you can do whatever you want with your borrowed money is because that's a necessary concept to understand when it comes to looping okay so looping is essentially doing exactly what you're doing here okay like setting up this position right here so let's look at this usdc right setting up this usdc borrowing uh setting in this collateral giving giving collateral to a to a, a, a protocol like this um borrowing an amount of usdc and then what can i do with this usdc well i said anything that also means i can deposit it back into the collateral side of things right so i could actually deposit this 500 dollars back into this side and what what happens there so so let's let's think about this so if i if i deposit this 500 dollars utc back into the collateral what happens to our loan to value ratio right I didn't add any additional money really to the system. So now I got $1,500 in, um, in collateral. And I still only owe $500 in, uh, in USDC. So now all of a sudden, what happens to our, uh, what, what just happened to our loan to value ratio, right? So we took, we have $500. Let's divide that by 1,500. And now all of a sudden, we have a 33.3% loan, loan to value ratio. Whoops. Come on, you're better than that. And all I did was stick that amount. So I lessened the risk, right? Uh, that's exactly what I did. I took my the amount that I borrowed and I put it back in and I lessened the risk and what happens if I was making an APY on this side, right? So now I'm making an APY. So let's say this was, I was making 10% on this side. Let's just say that, right? Let's say I was making 10% APY on my collateral. And let's say I was uh, I was being charged 5% interest. So I'm still only be char getting charged 5% interest, right? So I'm still over, over the course of the year. Oops. Over the course of the year, I'm still only being charged Five percent, so I'm being charged twenty-five dollars in interest. Twenty-five dollars in interest. But now, instead of being instead of making ten percent of a thousand dollars, now I'm making ten percent of a uh, of fifteen hundred dollars, right? Fifteen hundred dollars times ten percent, hundred fifty dollars. instead of hundred dollars well you get the idea so immediately you see the value of that right now i want you to kind of focus on what just happened there we lessen the risk we took that five hundred dollars we put it back into collateral by lesson that's how we lessen the risk and then we also uh, increase our reward by fifty dollars, right? Or, or you know, by by allowing us to get uh, by taking that borrowed amount. So this this is an example of that first loop, and we're gonna we're gonna take a look at my stable loop uh, calculator to show you a stable loop, um, and kind of give you a good idea as to the power of this. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's 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 what's happening. When people are talking about nine ninety, they're talking about this. Now, 
what what additional risks are we taking on okay let's say let's say these weren't stable coins right stable coins don't move in value um, so let's say you did that let's let's go down here to this uh, one of these riskier scenarios like here okay let's say you you did that here you put a thousand you had you, you, you had a thousand dollars collateral you borrowed USDT right five hundred dollars worth and then you went to a stable coin you went to a swap site you swapped this USDT for $500 worth of Ethereum. You Then you came back here, you took that Ethereum and you put it in here. Now all of a sudden you have $1,500 in value in collateral, okay? So in that particular case, you did exactly, you know, this your loan to value ratio, same thing happens. It goes down to 33.3% loan to value, which is excellent. You lessened your, you lessened your uh, loan to value risk. Your, your list of liquidation but let's what what happens if at that point even still ethereum halves in price right now let's say you're just that's all you do you're waiting right you wait you took you took your money you you borrowed it you put it back into this collateral now you're just sitting back trying to make apy right um but let's say over the time over time ethereum drops enough that you're that you're liquidated Okay, because it can happen. Even though you got a thousand five hundred dollars in here now, doesn't mean you're out of like you're still got a thirty three. Like as, if if this drops enough to still put you at eighty percent, you'll still be liquidated. So the additional risk you're taking on by doing looping is that you're also putting the amount that you borrowed at risk. Okay, remember before in our other situation where if I borrowed, if I took out, you know, in this particular scenario, if I got liquidated. I would still have this $500 somewhere else, right? Maybe I took it out and put it in my bank account. Maybe I put it into a different system. Maybe I traded it. I don't know, but that would still be mine. And I, you know, that's still, that, that would, that scenario would stay the same. But in this case, you put it back into this loan collateral of this loan. Well, now you're putting it at, at, at risk as well, right? So if you were to get liquidated, it's additional risk or you'll also lose your the amount that you borrowed. Um, so keep that in mind because now all of a sudden when you're looping, the additional risk is you're putting your entire amount of money at risk, okay? Include, uh, you're putting the at risk is the amount that you borrowed plus liquidation fee. Whereas before it was just really your your liquidation fee plus the amount uh, that that uh, that your collateral dropped, or or the amount that their borrow rose. Um, so keep that in mind, right? That's that's so important with this next scenario it, with this with this looping, and um, and understanding that you're putting the entire position at risk. Okay, nearly nearly the entire position at risk when you loop. In this scenario, when you're just depositing and borrowing, you're not putting the whole you're not putting the whole position at risk. Okay. So you, you can see how, um, you know, as we get more advanced, you have to really think of more things, right? Think, keep, keep more things in your mind. And you can see how people can be uh, really taken aback and, and in some cases fooled into thinking they're, they're secure. And especially when you see some of these, like some of these tokens out here that, that can drop drastically in value, uh, it, in some cases in a few hours. Um, so anyway, um, so you got to manage that risk. Okay. So I think what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you some examples of a stable loop. Okay. What does that mean? It means that we're going to put in a stable coin and we're going to get a stable coin out. Um, and I'm going to show you how this works from on a stable coin standpoint. Um, and, and just, just know you can do this with, you know, in, in these other scenarios, right? But because of the added risk of putting the entire position at liquidation, uh, I would recommend until you firmly understand how this all works and you have a firm grasp that you avoid doing any of these scenarios, okay? The, the value changing crypto to stable or vice versa, or worst case, the, the two value changing cryptos. 
um, because you just put yourself at so much more risk. So in my personal portfolio, the only type of position that I take up is one of these two. It's either, it went looping. It's either a stable coin to stable coin or a value or a value changing crypto to the same exact value changing crypto because the, the risk is the same as the stable coin to stable coin. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next tab here. Here we go. All right. So in this particular case, we're going to use an example that I actually really enjoy. Um, so let's let's pop over here and look at the uh, USD UST um, MIM stable coin. Um, so in this particular case, um, let me get the parameters from this thing here real quick. So. Uh, the loan to value ratio. So in this case, remember the uh, so this the max is uh, on on this particular pool. Let's take a look here quick. Uh, the max on this particular pool is ninety percent. Okay. Um, the liquidation fee is five percent. The borrow fee is one percent, and the interest is two point five percent. So in this particular case, they have a couple different ways. Uh, so they they take an initial one percent. In this case, one percent that's added to your debt every time you borrow. Uh, MIM, their stable coin. So every time you borrow, they they, they take 1% off the top of however much you borrow. Um, and then they also charge 2.5% interest each year o over the course of the year, added up to 2.5 over the year. Um, and then there's a 5% liquidation fee. Um, and I do have a sizable position on this that I'll, I'll, I'll show you here quick uh, after, we're, after we're done doing some of the calculations. So let's just input some of this into the calculator. So the maximum collateral, uh, collateral ratio is 90%. Uh, let's go ahead and because I never like to get close to that, right? Um, so that would be the maximum. So let's let's do our calculations based on 80%, right? And you'll see a bunch of stuff just change. Um, and then let's look at some of the other things. The APY for this, this is really nice, 16.56%. So this one's 16.56%. Is that going to change? Oh, you son of a gun. Get that right. Excellent. The borrow fee, one uh, percent, which I think is we already have that. The effect of APY. Um, so this is APY minus interest. So that's going to be fourteen or fifteen point. Oops. I don't know why I just don't have this calculated. This minus this, and then this is two point five. Excellent. Okay, so effective APY. So, and, and it basically just means, hey, you're making 16.56 interest on the on the over the year, and you're being charged 2.5. So it's uh, so 2.5 minus this is your effective uh, interest rate. So I'm going to cover some of this up so that to keep things uh, simple and reveal it more and more as we go. So let's just explain it all and see where this takes us. So let's say, and we'll start with some easy numbers, right? We have a thousand dollars, just like before. Um, we have a thousand dollars. And let's say we deposit that thousand dollars in UST, which is a stable coin. Um, we're gonna borrow, so that means uh, at eighty percent we can borrow up. To, if we want to maintain an eighty percent loan to value ratio, we can borrow eight hundred dollars, right? Eighty percent of a thousand, eight hundred dollars. Um, they said that they uh, they add a borrow fee every time you borrow of 1%. So you'll notice here, this has 1% added onto it, which is $8, 1% of $800 is $8. Um, and that puts our new loan to value ratio at 80.8%. And you see right away why you do not want to start at the maximum, right? You will be instantly liquidated. I actually, I don't even know if it'll let you do, uh, do it. Um, but you, so if we, we want to start a little bit lower than the maximum amount of, uh, the loan to value ratio, because automatically just because of the borrow fee involved, we're more than the 80% that we started out with. So keep that in mind. Remember, this is the APY that we're going to make on our thousand dollars collateral. Great. Um, the annual return. So this is just quite simply 16.56% times our $1,000 initially. That gives us $165.60 over the course of the year we are going to make. Now, we have to calculate interest. Now, this interest is based on the borrow fee plus how much we borrowed, right? So the, it has to be this number 
multiplied by the interest because the interest is charged on our total debt. Remember it said back there that it's, it's added on to our, to our debt. So in this particular case, so, and this is, this is a nice way for you to see how all of these things come together, right? Um, so, so we take that interest fee, we times it by 8.8 or, or $808 and we get $20 and 20 cents of interest per, over the course of the year. So our profit is simply our return minus our interest it comes to $145 and 40 cents in profit. If all we did was put a thousand dollars in borrowed $800 and then just went off and did whatever we wanted with our $800, right? So on that $1,000, we would make $145 and 40, uh, yeah, $145.40 profit. Um, excellent. So that, that would be as simple as that, right? But let's say we did what we, we were talking about. Let's do this loop, right? So let's say instead of just settling for these mega gains, um, well, let's say we took that $800 and not the 808 because the eight, eight, that eight is not part of what we borrowed, right? That's just getting out on onto our debt. Um, but we were, were able to actually borrow $800. Let, let's say we put that back into the collateral. Loop one, boom, 800, 100 and 800 or $1,800 is how much now we have in collateral. Now what's happening here? Okay. So now what's happening is we're actually making 16, let's say, let's say, let's ignore this, uh, the second part here where it says borrowable MIM, right? Let's say let that, that portion here. Um, let's say we just put the collateral in. We didn't borrow this, uh, 600 and here, let me, let me, let me make a little, another little blocker here for you. So you don't, we don't, I don't want to get anybody confused and I want to kick everybody through kind of step-by-step. Step. All right. Use this like this. Okay. So now let's say, now let's say we have $1,800 in here, okay, of collateral. We still only have $808 debt, right? So our interest is still only going to be $20.20, but now we're making 16.56% on $1,800. So that's just like the last thing we did, right? Um, or the last problem that we did. Um, now though, so if we bring out our trusty calculator again, let's bring this bad boy up. So what is that, right? What 1800 times 0. 0.16 psi six, that gives us this 29808. That's the amount of our return on this amount of collateral, right? Right. How much is our interest? Well, it's going to be the same as it was back here because we didn't borrow any additional right? So our profit here would essentially be this minus this and give us uh, 20, 20. Okay. That's how much we would profit if that's all we did. It's not bad. It's not bad. But, but this is looping and we don't want to just do that. So what can we do? Well, now we have $1,800 in here. Now what can we do? Well, now we could borrow 80% of that. Or, uh, I'm sorry, now we can borrow 80% of that 800, right? Yes, yes, we can. So 80%, so this is the, sec the we're, we're, we're going on to the second loop here. So, uh, so 80% of $800 is $640 we could borrow. So let's do that. We borrow that, and now we have total debt. So this is 640 times 1% plus total debt. Okay. So it's this 808 plus 640 times 1%. So if you're, if you're going to look at the math problem, right, it's going to be that plus, and then the 1% gets added on to only this. Sorry, 1.01. So that's, it's, this is 1%. And, and here, just to show that I'm not joshing you, 1.01. .01, so that's 1% of that. That's, that's, uh, 1% of that is $6, right? A $646 is $6 and 40 cents. And, and since I typed it by 1.01, .01, it actually adds it to it, right? So we have that plus 808. What do we get? Ah, 
Yes, now our total debt comes in. So that's what this is doing as we go down, okay? Our new loan to value ratio actually doesn't change. It remains the same. If you divide um, how much we now have borrowed versus how much we have in collateral, it's it's back up to 80.80%, okay? Because remember, when we just did this, right, and didn't borrow the second time here, what, what happened here? Well, our loan to value ratio actually decreased, right? It didn't stay at 80.80%. So it actually was, prior to actually taking the second borrow, it was actually 0.44 point, point, I'm sorry, 44.88% repeat. That's what it became before we did this next part, right? But now we borrowed and we borrowed again to put us back up to 80% because why not? That's what we, that's what we were going back to anyway. Um, I'll explain this APY here in a second. So the the annual return now on so and, and we kind of are, we already calculated this. This number is uh, derived because we have one thousand eight hundred dollars times sixteen point five six. That gives us the two eighty or I'm sorry two hundred and ninety eight dollars and eight cents. Annual interest now is calculated based on this new number times two point five percent. Right, so now we're at thirty-six dollars and thirty-six cents, and now all of a sudden this minus this gives us this two hundred and sixty-one dollars and seventy-two cents profit. Um, so you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, why'd you do that? Because you know we were actually making a little more profit if we just kind of hung back here, right? Sure, sure, but remember now we have six hundred forty dollars just floating around. What are we gonna what What are we gonna do with that? Well, let's deposit it back in there. And we roll again. So now you, you see where this is going, right? So now you have $2,440 in collateral, right? And now you're making 16.56%, oh, I'm sorry, 0.65, uh, 1656. You see, now you're making $440 in a year. That's way more than you were making before. So you see here how this is quickly getting to be um more and more return and you might be thinking okay well what's this apy here thing john well this is basically showing you how much apy you are making on your original thousand dollars because remember at this point we had we didn't add any additional money into the system uh, any additional money over a thousand dollars other than what we first started with a thousand dollars so what that's saying is now, now all of a sudden, so let's take this annual profit, right? So after after this second loop, we're now making $354.78. So how much annual, how what's the percentage that I'm APY I'm making if that's how much profit I'm getting on that original thousand dollars, right? So let's divide that by a thousand dollars. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, okay. So you're effectively making uh, 35.47. I guess I should probably put an effective APY over here, uh, to be honest with you. But um, the reason you see 40.1% is because I actually took it this. I took uh, it from this number. Um, so, so for example, because the actual return, the APY that I'm making, not including interest. So what you just saw was including interest, okay? Um, what you're, what you're actually seeing here is 404, your actual profit, right? Not including interest divided by a thousand dollars. And that's where you're getting your 40.41, you know, it rounds a little bit there. If you add, if you take into account interest, right? Um, and maybe that's what I'll, I'll add that to this calculator here. Five, three, five, four point seven eight. If you take into account interest, you're actually making 35.48 rounded percent APY on a thousand dollars and this is what people are doing right and the re so this is the reason why people are doing it right um, is because now I can take this away and now you can see all the loops they're all doing the same thing the loan to value ratio never changes the borrows you know i did 20 this is 22 loops you traditionally wouldn't do that much right because at a certain point it's diminishing gains right it's diminishing to the point where it, it just doesn't make sense um or or 
you know, in, in some cases, it's a lot of work in, in some cases. Like if there's gas fees, if you're doing this on Ethereum and whatnot, each one of these things is a transaction and it's just going to add up. Um, but at a certain point, you would just stop like down here. Uh, a lot of people don't do many that many loops. Um, but you can see very quickly here how you can get up to some really decent uh apys right and and that that's only on a thousand dollars what happens if you do this with ten thousand dollars wow right right now you start seeing some crazy returns on a year right 75 percent you can get up to pretty easy and, and the nice thing about this is the threat um the risk you want and the reason you want to keep the risks of liquidation lows because all of this is at risk if you're looping okay so that's why i only do things with stables okay so in my particular case i'm using abracadabra money abracadabra money um to use put in a stable get out a stable because the price between them the the, the stable coin remains pegged to a dollar okay so you're saying uh, you might have just looked at that position and been like, well, John, why why aren't you at uh, 80, 90, a higher percentage loan to value ratio? Like, I don't know if you notice here, um, in my particular case, right? I've been able, I have a collateral deposited, collateral value, right? So my deposited, uh, let's just use the deposit, right? So this is how much I have deposited. Um, but right here, right, go 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 back. Actually, um, yeah, other way around. Other way around. I borrowed six eight zero eight five zero. Oh. It got up to borrowing this much mem, right? Um, and I only deposited five two eight. So you'll notice my lateral, uh, my loan to value ratio is 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 point seven is is seventy six percent. So it's it's much lower than eighty percent, much lower than ninety percent. Um, and you're like, well, hey, John, you know, they don't move in value. Why would you ever uh, go off so far? Like you can see here, even what my liquidation price is, it's uh, the, the price of UST stablecoin would have to get unpegged from the dollar all the way down to point uh, to 84 cents, a little, a little bit less than uh, a little bit less than 85 cents in order for me to get liquidated. Because if my, if I got liquidated, I'm just not willing to take on that risk, right? Um, if I if, if there are things called flash crashes, okay, and this is something you need to be co considerate of. And here's some here's some uh, of the risks I've labeled down here, right? The pro uh, so one risk is you know the protocol could get hacked. You know if that happens, uh, there's no telling what could happen because it really depends on the hack. But you know that that's always an innate risk with using any DeFi central or DeFi product right out there. That is always going to be a global risk, okay? No matter how many times it's audited. Now, granted. The more times it's audited, the better, right? So you want to, you want to. That's that's part of the reason why when you look at a lot of these, um, a, a lot of these protocols, a lot of these DeFi apps and whatnot, you want to do some research into them and understand. Okay, how many times were you audited by a third party and or for security flaws and things of that nature? Um, because the more, the better, right? You want to be pre. You you want to mitigate this risk as much as possible. Um, now, the, some of the other risks are. The loss of the the UST UST uh, peg resulting in liquidation. So I could get. There's a reason. There's a liquidation price here, okay? Uh, on this on this uh, cauldron, right? Um, it's be, there's a five percent liquidation fee because if it could get liquidated, like the the there are there is code put aside there or built into it that if UST falls in value to a point where the same goes with anything if my like if usd falls in value to the point where it's it's getting to a point where it can't cover how much i borrowed it's gonna liquidate and pay back the borrow and leave me with whatever's left and that's not gonna be much if anything because of how how I'm, how you're looping okay remember you're putting all this at risk um and the reason i i set my risk to where it's at um is because um, if you come out here and look at the historical price of UST, okay, and you can go to a couple different, there's an Oracle, um, I like to also track the Oracle for UST, and you can find this uh, on Chainlink. Now, make sure you understand where the protocol is getting the price, so in this particular case, Abracadabra is getting, their, their, they're detecting the price of UST through this Oracle, so I watched this, right, and if this starts to 
uh, lose its peg, start to drop to 99 cents, 98 cents, 95 cents, 94 cents. You know, I'm going to start thinking about repaying my loan um, or adding more collateral, one or the other, to, to drop down my, my risk of being liquidated because, I, you know, the risk is too great. Um, but the reason I selected where I'm at now is because there is, there's these things called flash crashes. And you can clearly see here there have been two flash crashes of particular note in the UST that um you know I, I just came out here and i was able to see oh look at one point it dropped to 94 cents so it has happened before um and people have got liquidated during this case so I, that's why you don't want to max out these positions okay um and whoa look at this bad boy um this dropped to 85 uh 85 cents little little over 85 cents so that's why when you look at my position the i set my liquidation price to be lower than it's ever been before i feel pretty safe with that um at the moment um and and keep in mind as i make profits on this the pro uh the the apy is actually much bigger than the interest right so i'm getting you know interest is getting added onto my debt but as the weeks go on my apy is so much more that my collateral value is increasing at a much higher rate which is driving down my loan to value ratio, which is always the goal, right? Um, so that's that's the key, because as you drive down your loan to value ratio, well, you're, you're risking less and less, right? Um, and the price at which you get liquidated continues to drop. So I see my price, my liquidation price dropping at like uh, 0 .00, uh, I think it's like one seven per, uh, per week, which is pretty decent um so i think now you might have a good idea as how as as to how a lot of this looping works and and you could do this you know granted you know let's go out here and look um and and you can do this over here right you could loop usdc here um you could now it's uh, you can loop usd uh, ust here and it would work out pretty well um i will say that abracadabra does give you some of the better um uh, situations um, in order, you know, different. Like they're they're multi-chain. You can do, uh, you know, they 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 have a lot. Like this uh, CVX three pool here is a, you know, that CVX three pool is actually just a bunch of stable coins. And so this I would consider stable to stable, right? And you're you're getting a lot less, but at the same time, it's just a different, you know, uh, it's different. Um, it's it's three stable coins so it's diverse it's diversifying your positions there's a lot of things that go into it but uh you could absolutely go out here to one of these and and uh and you know like uh x sushi right that's a value changing token put put a bunch of sushi in here uh make 20 percent on that borrow mem go swap it for more x sushi uh put more sushi in here and start looping this but the risk becomes so much more greater because not only are you adding the risk that you're you're putting your entire uh, bag at, uh, bag on the line, but you run these risks right where if the stable coin itself drops in or if the if the value changing coin itself drops or rises in value, um, so in this particular case you'd be in this scenario right with Mim on this side, um, and and um, Sushi on this side, and in this particular case remember down here. Um, if, you know, if sushi started dropping value really hard, um, started dumping, you could get liquidated. It'll liquidate your whole bag. Um, and that's no bueno, um, in my book. So, and, and that's just not, it's just not a risk I'm willing to take on. So, and that's just me. But the purpose of this is for you to understand the risks of all of these things and uh, and i do have a note here i forgot to mention uh why do these numbers not exact like it match exactly the agriculture well uh it's because remember how i said you, you're taking that mim and then you're you're swapping it for sushi or or in my case if you if you go back here to to my ust so it's taking that mim and it's swapping it for ust well it's swapping it somewhere right and what's happening is there's a swap tolerance so Basically, it's going to get you within uh, if you whatever you have selected here percentage. So it may or be may or may not be when you swap the MIM for UST. There's there might be a one percent uh, difference in the uh, in the in the amount. You you can see that one UST equals one point zero 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 
nine mim, right? Well, it'll be, you'll get within 1% plus or minus of that amount when you swap, right? And that's because of the way liquidity pools work. And that's a whole other story and situation. But just understand the difference there is because when you like when you're when you're looping and whatnot, um, that you're you, you have to go swap that token typically, unless unless you're like here on uh, see that uh, that's not the case when you're doing something like here, right? Where I'm just uh, you know I'm all, I'm doing this on the same protocol. I'm I'm giving the the token and I'm borrowing the same token and then giving the token back. So in this case, there there wouldn't be any swap because you're not swapping, right? But in the in the case where you're you're borrowing a token, that's different than what you're putting in. That you know the swap comes into play. Um, so just you know the little nuances, but I think the the overall uh, idea here to get through is that you know the, the concepts that i've tried to lay out as to what is 99 what is loop lending looping um and and how does it work and how can it affect your gains how can it affect your risks and i hope that this explained it in such a way that you're now able to go out into the world and make educated data-driven decisions which if that's the case then my my job here is done Drop me any comments. Let me know. Uh, drop me a like if you really got any value out of this. Uh, you know, I, I would really love uh, to start building a following. So hit me with a subscribe if you want. I'm going to put out uh, eventually here. I'm actually going to go through how I physically built my uh, UST MIM position. You'll notice here, uh, you know, I, I didn't start out with $66,000 in this, right? Um, I actually only put in uh, $16,000. So, uh, you know, just to give you an idea of the power of this, um, on that $16,000, I'm making 16, uh, I, I'm making 16.56% uh, on the $66,000 instead of $16,000, right? Uh, so instead of making two thousand dollars on the, on the two, almost three thousand dollars on the year so instead of that because i'm doing this this way and and adding risk to my portfolio um i'm now making uh so let's do the value of it oh seven two one so on that same amount i'm making instead of eleven thousand dollars on sixteen thousand dollars which means i'm actually making an effective apy of almost seventy percent on a stable coin awesome very awesome and that's the power of this so uh stay tuned I, like i said I'll, I'll put out a i'll put out a video on how i did this and and how abracadabra works and what some of these things mean and and i'll show you how they have the blooping built in uh which is really really cool um you know a lot of these platforms you got to do it manually uh abracadabra they realize the power of it they build it into the system which is really really neat uh and great because this is on ethereum and and it only takes in once you hit once you do this once you don't have to do it over and over you don't have to manually do the loops right because you could you could sit here and i could be like deposit in here right deposit supply connect what you know connect wallet supply however much i'm going to supply borrow do the borrow Boom, and then I gotta take it, it's in my wallet, and I gotta come back here and supply it. And you'd have to manually do that, but in Abracadabra, it's so nice. It's built, they built in this looper that does all this looping for you because they want you to take advantage of of this of, of, of the power of this lending looping, but but it also adds some risk. So uh I like I said, I hope you enjoy. Um and that's all I have for you today. JD out.